and turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, for all the Patreon people out there, like like the moment before Danielle started waving, we were both like, <laughs> it's <laughs> rainy out. Oh, it is I'm rainy tired. out. tired. No, I'm just kidding. It we were just out. talking about on Tuesday when we were recording about how, look, it's always sunny when we're recording. How about that? Today, it is like a dreary day in London outside. It's yucky out. Yeah. I don't know if people can, people can, I guess probably can't really see out of my windows no. either way. You can see out of your windows. Kind of. Yours, yours always look pretty much the same, though, because you're looking right at that wall and no the sunlight brick. to get in there. <laughs> nope. Not ever. There is no sunlight in my house. It is the a morning, and even on a beautiful sunny day, the lights have to be on in our house because of how dark it is in our house. But we love our house outside of that. Yeah, I feel and that. Street parking. Ooh. I'm very excited for this episode. Very excited. I've been thinking about this episode Probably double how much I think about the other episodes. So for the past 20 minutes versus the past 10 minutes. (laughs) No, because we've been talking for the last like 20 minutes. Oh, good point. For the last several days. Good. Anyway, um, uh, have you seen that? Has maybe y'all have seen it? You can Google this if you're out there. There's a this silly analogy video thing where this guy takes a jar and he tries to put sand in it first, and you like can't put anything else if you put sand in it. But if you put like you know, these like big rocks in it first, and then you fill it up with some more rocks, like small, small rocks that kind of fit in between the cracks. And then you try to pour the sand in the whole entire cup. I think it was like a mason jar gets filled up for everything. But if you try to put the sand in first, then the other things, it doesn't work. That's why that is a beautiful metaphor for this amazing episode, because we've been talking so much about the big things that you have to do, the hiring the wedding pros, the finding the venue, the all of the, the big things that everybody always talks about. Who's this? Who's that? Um, and this episode is just all these like little nuggets of information that are are going to be so helpful in creating a more fun, more si- simplified, more convenient uh, experience for you, for your guests, for everybody involved in the wedding. And I'm just I'm just really excited about it because these like little things can often, you know, make or break an experience for me. So I'm just excited to, to talk through some things, you know. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the teeny tiny things today, which feels- falls in line well with our micro weddings episode where, Dan, you thought right. micro weddings meant really, really tiny dishes not, and flatware. We're not, not talking about really- that. <laughs> Think about, think that. It was a joke for the podcast. <laughs> but that'd be funny if like that was one of the things we talked about is like small details, really tiny forks. <laughs> really tiny forks. Throwback. <clears throat> so yeah, honestly, I always like when our podcast episodes have this like flow to them, right? Because we always feel like that's just really enjoyable to listen to if Dan and I are just talking back and forth. But today we just have like a few things that we just want to share. Um, I don't want it to feel choppy. So hopefully you guys can, can stick along with us for the ride. But we have just some fun things that because jump all over the place. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we're going to jump a bit. Um, this is a perfect episode for you, Dan, for for the way your brain works. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Because you are able to just bounce True. around. Yeah. So, so yeah, and Squirrel. I think what it comes down to, focus, what it comes down to is that, like Dan said, you can have all these big things in place, and if you don't do these little things, no one's really going to know. But if you're at a place where you can be like, oh, you know what, that thing sounds really cool and like something I would love to do, that's why we're sharing it. Yep. Right. So if you don't yeah. do these things, you do not get like downgraded as a as a bride or a groom who's like awesome. You are still awesome and a rock star and A plus gold stickers all the way. These are just some little things that we've seen in our journeys and our experiences that have been like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Sound good? Totally. totally. So Dan, do, do you want do you want to start or shall I? Um Ladies first. Ah, okay. So the first thing that I love, and I know, Dan, you've seen it too, because I feel like we've worked together on weddings where we've commented about this, is to make a getting ready playlist, right? Totally. So wherever you're getting ready, plan to bring a phone, a phone charger, Bluetooth speaker to hook up yours or somebody else's phone. It's a great job to delegate to a bridesmaid. I know, Dan, right? Everyone always forgets the speaker. Everybody forgets the Bluetooth speaker. Everybody Everybody. But like, who cares, right? You can also still just play it through your phone or, you know, whatever. But like, what songs 
pump you up? What songs put you in a great mood? Like think of it as like just setting the tone for your day. It might be like low key or like classical. I'm like, I love the Spotify podcast, the Zen Indie Folk. I love that podcast or not podcast, that playlist rather on Spotify. Yeah. So like, but like there's also like songs to sing in the shower, but like make your own or pull something else, but have that thing ready to go. Yep. So that when like hair and makeup starts or the, the guys are hanging out, yep. that goes on and that starts playing. It's not something yeah. you have to be thinking about the night before. If you've got a few weeks or months before the wedding, do it now. Start like hearing songs on the radio or wherever you're at and being like, ooh, I like the vibe of this. Add that to the playlist. It's fun, right? It's Yeah, like, it's super fun. Yeah, it's not a thing that's going to be on a checklist anywhere. It's not on the Knots Wedding Planning checklist, but... You know, it's just, or I've heard ones where they're like every single song is like wedding, wedding related. You know, it's like going to the chapel or like, you know, Bruno Mars, like marry you, marry me, whatever it is. I think marry you yeah. is train. Uh, but Matt like, Nathanson, wedding dress. Love that song. Yeah. Like all those just like fun ones. Right. Yeah. So that's, yep. that's our first like little bitty detail is make a getting ready playlist. Yeah. And if you don't have a Bluetooth speaker, cause I feel like some people just might not have one. Right. Totally. Um, there, there are these like silly little ones you can get at Target or whatever that are no lie, like fifteen dollars. They like they look like an accordion in the middle. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones that you can get, but they literally like unscrew and they look like an accordion in the middle. Um, I forget what the brand is. I think there's a bunch of different brands, but they it's such a great little thing. It has like good bass that comes out of this little tiny little speaker. It's amazing. Or do what I do and put your phone in a bowl. Done. <laughs> That works too. That works too. Yeah. But doesn't, you need like the amplification and the bass effect. <clears throat> I don't. I, I but I'm not a speaker person. But for, like right. I but just also need to for Zen sense. for Zen uh, granola folk. focus, whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> don't make fun of my jams, man. Yeah, give me like I want some Nicki Minaj super bass. So that doesn't sound good in a cup. I think it sounds good regardless. You do you <laughs> guys, ringers. You, you do, do you. you. Don't let damn Dan shame you into a Bluetooth speaker. <laughs> but really anyway. there are some cheap options out there that's really true there are um let's go oh man i feel like we should have sw switched these i should have done oh. getting playlist and you should have done signage <laughs> oh um, I, I could talk about this one too yeah we can both talk about this one but you can yeah. go first because i know you have a lot to add on this one uh yeah so well go ahead dan you you introduce it so then i'll just talk from there okay so next we're gonna talk about signage great job about dan <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness. All right. So signage is one of those things um, I tell all of my clients that if you don't have a sign saying ceremony this way or welcome or bathrooms that way, no one is going to oh, guffaw at the fact that these things aren't there, right? Guffaw. Guffaw. I, I type that word out probably more than anybody in the world. So G-U-F-F-A-W. Okay. Gaffaw. Gaffaw. <laughs> I don't know if that's the legal spelling, but that's how I spell it. So, so, but what it does is it just adds a little extra element to your event that keeps your guest informed, especially yep. if it's not super obvious what's happening. But let's say your wedding is taking place at a, at a hotel, right? In this like beautiful hotel ballroom. And maybe there's a few different weddings happening at that venue at the same time. Well, if you have this beautiful welcome sign that says, welcome to Dan and Rachel's wedding, all of your guests showing up go, oh, okay, we're definitely in the right spot, right? It gives them that yeah. instant relief. Instead of like looking around being like, okay, do you see somebody we know? Oh, I think that's Uncle <laughs> Billy. You know, it just gives that like instant thing of you're in the right space. Welcome. We're so happy you're here. Done. You know what I mean, yep. Dan? Yep. hundred percent. Dan, have there been any um, signs at weddings you've done or been to that have like particularly stuck out to you? Hmm. Um, I think one of the ones I see all the time that's, you know, not a huge big deal, but just a sign for like your guest book. Um, but one that one that I really love is if you're a social person, this would probably be really helpful and that'd be a hashtag sign. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, which th is what? that's what which is um a hashtag, if in case and you guys don't know what this is, is essentially a way that you guys create a uh, a tag for your wedding that you can share on Instagram and Facebook and whatever. And all your friends and family can literally tag your wedding. And then all you can search your tag on Instagram. Where else can you do it other than Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, 
that anywhere else? Twitter, but I don't know if people are still on Twitter. Yeah. It feels um, like there's an obvious missing one here, and I can't think of it. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, so you can create like a tag, and then anybody who tags your photo, obviously all those photos will get kind of dumped into this one folder, so to say. Not really a folder, but when you search your hashtag, you'll see all the pictures that people posted. So it's another way of being able to see um, wedding, uh, see photographs from your wedding without, you know, from your guest perspective. But the best part is that, well, the major part is that people need to know about that hashtag in order to be able to do this. So right. putting a couple signs on the bar where you know people are going to be, maybe putting one near the seating chart or something like that, just mm -hmm. something silly that says like, hey, you know, uh, share your photos from the night with us or share your photos from the day, hashtag blah, you know? Right. Exactly. And like it can be creative. It could be simple. Um, I think it's one of those things where this is only applicable if you want those photos being shared. If you're more private and you don't want them being shared, this yep. doesn't apply to you. But you have to totally. get that hashtag out to them. And that's the best way to know to do it. Yeah. And speaking of bar, like you said, putting it on the bar. Um, another one that I love is a bar menu. So what happens as guests are waiting in line um, at your event is that they are they're waiting and they're they're chatting with each other and they get up to the front and then they ask the bartender, "Well, what are my options?" Right? Yep. Especially if the bar doesn't have a clear way of of letting you know what's available. So then the bartender has to repeat those things over and over yep. and over again every single time. Versus if you have a bar menu, like a little sign that sits on a on your bar, not necessarily little, but. Um, that as guests are waiting in that line, they're kind of looking at it going, ooh, the signature drink looks really cool, or ooh, that's the beer yeah. I'm going to get, or that's the kind yep. of wine I want. It keeps your bar line moving. It's not just something where, okay, you're letting the guests know this thing. It makes that bar line move fast. And I have yet to find anybody who said, I really want to wait in a really long bar line at this wedding. <laughs> that is my hope for today. <laughs> Yeah. One of the ones that like I think is an absolute necessity that I very rarely see is a sign okay. for the card box. Two yeah. reasons. One, well, one is that some of your guests, especially the older guests, will probably still want to walk up and hand it to you. Um, that's totally they just like they love the the the, in the gratification. It makes them feel good. So be prepared for that, even if you have a card thing. So don't just be like, go put in the card thing, Aunt Mary or something. Um, you don't <laughs> want to do that. Um, be like, oh, sweet. You're amazing. I love you. Thank you so much for this beautiful card. Uh, but a sign for the cards. It's amazing how many people will walk in and even ask me, hey, do you know do you know where the cards are supposed to go? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Um but sometimes, you know, if you have a bird cage or or some of these different things that don't necessarily look like a card box, people just get confused. So being, you know, a sign with a little arrow that's like, hey, put the cards inside this bird cage. Mm hmm. Or just cards works or really well cards. too. And and here's the thing. I think I get why you probably don't see it often because I don't see it as often either. Um, mm -hmm. The way we do talk about it with our clients is it feels presumptuous right like oh i just know i'm gonna get cards so i've made this sign because this is where the cards go versus being like oh i'll just put out a basket and if we get cards they'll go there but i think it's pretty standard practice now um 100%. that you're going to be gifted from your from your guests coming and i think the 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 era of receiving actual big huge dish sets and blenders and toasters is dwindling thank god um I hate at the end of the night having to be like, here are all your presents. I mean, right? what a wonderful thing. It's just a pain in the butt ski to like then yeah. have to like figure out what car all this stuff is going to go in for them. So cars are just kind of standard practice. So I don't think it says like, we've set up this whole table here in this huge basket for all of our treasures, <laughs> right? So I think it's right. okay. And yeah, it will help totally. guests to know um, what the thing is designed for. There's so many unique things now. So I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Speaking of huge tables for things, uh, if you don't have signs for food in your buffet line, if you're having a buffet line, yeah. that's 100% uh, one of the most amazing things. Sometimes uh, just having like a sign or two. Well, a couple things having maybe like one sign at kind of at the beginning or a little bit, you know, before the beginning that says, hey, here's all the options. But then labeling the food that's out there. There's so many times. So I'm uh, I'm a vegetarian. My wife is also a vegetarian. And there's so many times where like you'll walk up on something and be like, oh, this looks amazing. But can I eat it? And there's other people who you probably don't even know have 
food allergies or whatever, or or just are wondering if there's meat in something or just what something is. There's sometimes right. where I'm walking up like, ooh, this looks kind of interesting. What is it? It's like a fried and, something and you're like, what's inside? <laughs> yeah. You know, so just put it, being able to put like those little, even if it's that little, what's what the folding envelope? Yeah. Type card, the tent card or whatever it's yeah. called. Just put it out there. This is what this thing is. Oh my gosh, that will, it's like this little tiny thing that helps people out in such a great way. Yeah, I 100% agree. All right, so, so moving on to uh, the next little thing. And honestly, when I was planning this out, this is the one I got hung up on the most because I started to realize as I expanded on it um, in my thoughts was this kind of isn't a small thing, but it's something I wanted to keep in here and something that yeah. like, Dan and I are super passionate about because we think it's important. So we decided to leave it in because it's worth saying, and that yeah. is showing your appreciation doing something a little unexpected for your partner, your wedding party, your parents, your guests on the wedding day. It does yeah. not need to be huge. Just a small, thoughtful something. Um, not something that's going to, you know, throw the whole timing of the day out of whack or, or anything like that, but just a little, just a little, a little something, something. Um, to show your love, to show your appreciation for like what's happening, to show the fact that you like, hey, this is a big deal and like I'm so happy that you're here and you're on this journey with me for it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um I mean uh, I remember I I feel like there can be a lot of pressure on this, right? Yes. But it, it I I really and don't think it expectation. Yeah, yeah, and I think I mean I remember wanting to send wanting to do something for Rachel and I I ended up sending her flowers and I was like I, I hope that they get there in time I like there's all these things where I was like I I need to do something for her right like just to let her know how excited I am and that I can't wait to see her and all these things because it was still in the morning and um and I love being around my wife so I sent her flowers and they actually showed up like right as she was about to get on the on the trolley and she said that they're beautiful and that it was like a nice little touch um but I, I, one of my favorite things that I love is is that connection that I see between people when they're reading cards that they wrote for each other. So they meet, you know, maybe they agree, and that's something you have to do ahead of time. But there's just this like this like promise to each other, you know that that's that's private. And one of the things that I really like about that is that it's a tangible thing that that maybe as like as marriage can be hard, right? So it's awesome to be able to have something like that that you can go back to in five years or 20 years or 50 years and see literally the card that your significant other, the person you're choosing to spend the rest of your life with, wrote to you on your wedding day, you know? Mm -hmm. And and that's a great reminder. I love yeah. that. I do usually say with gifts or cards that you're exchanging between the two of you as a couple, yep. um, you don't need to say like, by the way, I'm getting you a gift. But I would have <laughs> right. some sort of conversation that like, oh, hey, yeah. are we are we doing gifts just to sort of gauge? Um, because I think it can be a little awkward or like there's that, that weird feeling of guilt, right? When someone does something, but then the other person's like, oh, shoot, I didn't even think about it. So this yep. is your reminder to have that little conversation of like, do we want to do something? Because you may be like, ah. like some people are like, I don't want flowers. Like, yep. save, save your like. Buy me a cute pair of earrings, you know, whatever it is. Or, you know, <laughs> maybe like you send um, them like their favorite beer delivered on ice for the morning, you know, like whatever yep. it is. Um, I actually have a fun story to share. Um, I saw this wedding once while well, I was part of it and the ceremony was starting. Uh, mm -hmm. The groomsman and the groom was walking his mom down the aisle and, you know, we were getting the bridesmaids all lined up and all of a sudden the maid of honor turned to the bride and handed her an envelope, right? So like, this is like action is starting. She turns around and hands her an envelope and she's like, open it and read it. So what the groom had done was written out his thoughts that was like, you're about to walk down the aisle and I just want you to know that I cannot wait to marry you. And like, just like, it wasn't really long. But it was just this beautiful, touching thing that happened Ooh. to All like totally right set the tone. Dan, I nearly, I it did, it was everything in my power not to bawl my eyes out standing there because I just thought like it meant so much to her. You could just see it. I was just like, Dan or Danielle, give her that moment. Like, let her do her thing. But I was like, that was so beautiful. <laughs> Can you read it to me now, too? <laughs> yeah, I want right? to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like, and she, it was within enough time, like, she put it down, she like composed herself, and it was just like, you could just see it like, she she lifted she had this beautiful glow about her it was just so yeah. so awesome now that said this is where you need to know your partner if someone did that to me before i would i would be like oh i can't deal with this right now 
right? <laughs> I would probably panic, right? Because I don't deal yeah. well with surprises or unexpected things. So it's just like, it's just about gauging it, right? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that, uh, in terms of gifts, like Rachel and I didn't do gifts for each other on the wedding day, right. but what we did do, and one of the things that I really want to be able to do is I wanted to, to help I wanted to give her some things that she could wear on the wedding day. And I know that she she picks things out for herself um, and and doesn't go super crazy. She's very simple. Um, but I knew that that if she did plan something out, if I just all of a sudden threw in some some jewelry on the wedding day, that would completely throw her off because she would already have planned those things out. Right. So I wanted to kind of plan some of these things out and I gave her the gifts the the day before. So I got her a pair of earrings and then I also wanted to be the one to buy her shoes for her. So we like, like I kind of had some say and input in that because Rachel, uh, she doesn't wear them anymore because, uh, mom and pregnancy and that kind of stuff right now. But Rachel used to wear heels like nonstop all the time. She just loves heels and I'm excited to see her be able to wear them again. Cause I know she likes them and wants to wear them, but that was the other thing I bought. And so we just had some conversations around that. Like what are things that she would actually use and potentially continue to use later? Right. Um, yeah. So, so those were some things that specifically worked for her because I knew that she would appreciate them rather than a surprise on the wedding day. Right, right. And that's, like I said, coming down to knowing your partner and knowing um, because you could have surprised her with something on the wedding day, but all that would have done was inflated your ego and not actually given her a really warm and fuzzy feeling, right? That's yeah. So what about like what about like parents and guests? What kind so, of things can we do with them? Yeah, so I love the idea of writing a letter to your parents and maybe placing it at their table for dinner, right? So they come in and oh. like it's just sitting there and they just have this like, you know, mom and dad or whoever it is like, like look around and like we did this and and we could not have gotten here without you. We can't thank you enough. Like let's have this amazing night. Enjoy your dinner. We love you so much. Like I love that. How awesome is this? Like imagine putting yourself in there and it's like it's something you can do a bit in advance. Give it to your coordinator to whoever's, you know, taking care of your your placement of your things and they just place it on their their little napkin and it's good. And you can even, you know, say it like, oh, it's just how, you know, you reserved their seat for them that way too. So that's like also a nice little bonus. So yeah, um, I love that. I've actually seen something one of my clients did for their guests, the place hmm. cards. They wrote on the back of every single place card a little note to that guest. Oh. I mean, it was like one or two sentences. It wasn't a long, lengthy thing. And it certainly wasn't like but spilling still. their guts. But it was like, you came all the way from Nevada and, you know, we you, you make sure you try the this beer. We love you so much. Thank you for coming us. So That's it's just adorable. like time consuming, right? But yeah. Went a long way with the guests, for sure. Gosh. Doesn't doesn't like just a little bit of kindness go a long way, right? Like that's that's the saying, right? Because we are uh, – or maybe I'm just going to get a little philosophical right now. But, but like we are always so divided and our attention is so pulled in so many different ways. So how often is it that like, like when you see something like that, you're just like, wow. You know, especially if you see something like that and you see it's written on every single card, take a moment to realize like how long that must have actually taken the two of those people to write – that on 150 place cards, or even if it's 50, it's still maybe an hour or two or more, you know, but like just these little things to, to say, like, just to show some appreciation, show some kindness for all these people coming together for you. It's so beautiful. Right. And, and think about that too. So maybe an hour or two, maybe more, but no added cost. Yep. Right. Like, yeah. It's a way to really amplify that guest experience with adding zero dollars to the total budget of the wedding. Time, yeah. yes, and I get time as a resource that, you know, is limited, but, you know, maybe it's something where like an hour every night as you're watching TV or listening listening to that Zen Indie Folk Spotify playlist. Like, <laughs> Granola playlist. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. Maybe you could do both at the same time. Maybe you could listen to a bunch of cool playlists and as you're writing go, ooh, this is a cool song, add that to the playlist, keep writing, you know, multitask. Yeah, there you go. Ta-da! <laughs> Um, what else? I also want to think about, um, I think this is really sweet. If you have any like flower girls or ring bearers or young kiddos that are part of your yeah. wedding party or part of your inner circle of best people. Um, I think there's some fun things you can do to really make the day, make them feel special. 
right? Because as it is, they're like, they're part of the group and, you know, like they've got like their beautiful outfit on and, you know, some kids handle it well. Some kids just get really stressed out and just want to cry. But, you know, maybe it's something where you give them a disposable camera and you're like, I would really love for you to document today through your eyes and like let them just take a bunch of pictures all day. Like what a fun thing for them to keep Mm -hmm. them busy, make them feel important and how wonderful to get those photos back and see the day as they saw it, right? Yeah, yep. And and I think if you want to turn it into like a scavenger hunt and write write down maybe 10 things. It's like, okay, somebody wearing the color red. Boom. Ooh. You know, photograph that or somebody uh two people dancing together, you know, or you know, more than two somebody people kissing. dancing. Somebody kissing. Somebody yeah, kissing like just these like little things and like make it really silly for them. Um you know, and if you have uh I mean, color and that books goes and- for like all of Good. the kiddos at your wedding, right? Yep. Like, you, it doesn't yep. even have to be limited to the flower girls and ring bears. If you're opening up your guest list to include a few more kiddos, like kiddos love food and and dancing, yep. yeah. But you know what? Sometimes like their attention spans are a little bit different than ours as adults. Very and true. Yeah, this I love the idea of the scavenger hunt. But you were saying, yeah. uh, what 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 were you saying? Sorry. Like like coloring books and crayons is, yes. is obviously like a, a super simple one. But if you've got um. You know, a five-hour reception, you're talking of an hour cocktail hour, four-hour reception. That's a – five hours is a long time for a kid. So by that like, you know, hour three, you've got two hours left. And if the kid was expected to be there the rest of the time, having a dedicated space and maybe a babysitter or something that can put on some movies, some games, just something for kids to just decompress from the yes. constant boots, 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 somebody scream or whatever, you know? <laughs> Like they need a little bit of downtime and that would be, yeah. that would go such a long way for them. And for some kids, right, it's heading towards bedtime or maybe past bedtime. So giving them that space with a dedicated adult who's not drinking, who's who's just there to, to not party and just watch the kiddos, where maybe that kiddo is going to pass out on a chair or a couch or on a blanket on the floor. That's yeah. okay, right? Yep. Um, yep. That's that's showing your guests you're like really thinking ahead. So I love that stuff. Um, I have a girl who I use for every wedding when there's kids. Uh, when the couple's like, we need a babysitter. I'm like, this is my girl. She's amazing. She has the biggest heart. She's wonderful. I love her. Aww. Anyway, um, love okay. I know on one. To the next I got. Thing. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, know yeah. one. This is this is my favorite one because okay. I love food. Um, so uh, anytime. Guests usually expect a couple of things. They expect drinks during cocktail hour and they expect a big meal, right? Drinks during cocktail hour, maybe some small grabbies, um, some small petty fours. Or is that dessert? Uh, Petty fours is usually dessert, yeah. Oh, shoot. I thought I was going to use that word correctly there. Um, I think when it's a savory, it's an amuse-bouche. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not going there. My um, top chef knowledge. <laughs> and then they and then they expect dinner or something, right? right? But if yeah. you can like insert these little tiny things, right? Like a um, a pre ceremony snack, right? So people get there. Maybe you're. Uh, I'm thinking of this wedding that was outdoors. Ceremony was outdoors, and then everybody just like walked across this lawn to the reception area. Um, as they were walking in, there was a bunch of different. Uh, there was like a lemonade container. Um, uh, an iced tea section. They had these like nice little trinkets uh, out for people. Not trinkets. Nice little um, snacks to grab. I think it was popcorn was out there. Just like something little silly and fun. And people got out there and it was a warm day. It was in June. And they just like grabbed their lemonade or their iced tea. And they just they just like stood in the sun for a little bit. And they just loved it. It was so awesome. Um, yeah. Just like those little tiny things that you can like insert in there to just like – take that experience up one level, right? Like what else have you seen? Well, yeah, I've seen, my favorite I've ever seen was this little guac station because I am a sucker for guac. Um, They did, it was a Cinco de Mayo wedding. So there was guac and and margaritas to sort of start off. But it doesn't have to be alcoholic. Um, My usual rule of thumb is, A, if you're giving them something alcoholic, you have to give them something to eat because you don't want alcohol on empty bellies. And B, is that if you're giving them something to eat, you kind of have to give them something to drink, even if it's just ice water or lemonade or or iced tea. It doesn't need to be alcoholic. But if you're just giving them something to drink, you don't necessarily need to give them something to eat. Does that make sense? So like if you're giving them something to eat, think about you. Like if you're eating like salty popcorn, what's going to happen? You're going to be like, oh, you're going to be searching for at least a water, right? But if you just have a nice water, you're probably content with that if that's the only option. So yeah, that's that's my thing. And there there are some other times, and I know that most – 
this would probably be something very specific that you would have to work out with your venue. Yes. Um, and you might be able to uh, shed some more light on this, but like, you know, so if everything's all in one place, sure, it might be easy to add, you know, that little something before the ceremony is people getting there. But if you can do uh, the opposite, which would be like a later evening snack, mm -hmm. um, do you know how, do you know how most venues handle that? Is that something that they either have or don't have? Or like, you know, I'm assuming you could probably just hire a food truck or something to come and set up outside and you walk outside, and do something like that. Um, but yeah, I, that's not the only option that we're saying is is doing oh, right. a pre-ceremony snack or drinks, but there are other ways throughout the day that you can add little fun things in. Right. Late night snacks are getting really popular because um, they're sort of, they come after dessert and they're just this very unexpected thing that like by this time people are, uh, tend to be a little bit more more on the drinking front and they're you know they're needing something in their belly to start absorbing all this stuff and that's when they yeah. start craving food again too um it really depends on the venue some venues allow you to bring in outside food some don't we've had um different things we've brought in i mean we're in philly so we've brought in pretzels we've brought in pizza we've had ice cream trucks we've had um uh uh, oh god what was it it was a churro station they were like making live churros live churros they were making churros like <laughs> as yeah. people were coming up and getting so there was like this hot fried um thing oh sounds so good right i saw i saw a, a brick oven pizza truck that yes. came came at the end of the wedding so people were walking outside basically getting ready to leave hopping on trolleys and in cars and all that kind of stuff and everybody got their own little 10 inch pizza it was the most amazing surprise you should like people were just like like Gollum, like hoarding their pizza like <laughs> rah, 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 just going through it like in the corners oh so amazing but everybody got one and the vibe at, you know everybody's bummed that the wedding was over and everybody's like walking out you know talking or whatever and they just walked outside and there's just this like pizza guy flipping pizzas and a whole bunch of other guys it was cold but it was still it was cold outside but the pizza just warmed everybody up and oh I could go on about that pizza. Oh, <laughs> so good. I'm sorry. Continue. Anyway. No, so it's okay. I think it's just that like little unexpected thing, you know? Yep. And and I think it's as you're planning a wedding, um, as a planner, this is this is something we talk about a lot, right? That everybody wants to like just have that reception go on forever and ever and ever. And what you just said, Dan, is like, you know, people were like a little bummed that they had to leave. And that's kind of what you want, right? Like you never want your reception to end when it's coming back down like right you never want to end on that low note you want that you want that to end with them wanting just a little bit more and imagining it ending and then wanting just a little bit more and then you give it to them right yep. you give them that little goodbye snack or whatever it is and they go oh that was awesome yeah yeah i all right so if i can and maybe i should have saved this maybe i should save this for the end but but I want everybody out there to like think of the wedding script, right? Like you maybe you've been to one or two weddings or you just generally know what you're going to expect, right? Like like th most of them follow this similar format. You've got a ceremony. You've got to wait a little bit before the ceremony. You see the ceremony. You take a break. Maybe there's – maybe it goes right into the reception. Maybe there's an hour or two break. Um then you go to cocktail hour and then the party and then you leave and then there's an after party. Maybe there's not an after party, but it's generally these same things. Mm -hmm. And everybody just kind of knows what to expect. So where are the points in your wedding day where you can flip the script a little bit? Where like you know that people are just going to be doing this thing. They might be on autopilot in certain areas of the day. Where's that point where you can just like flip the script just a little tiny bit? Where you can just like maybe it's maybe there's like a valley of energy, right? Like you know that generally speaking, the cocktail hour is is a uh, it's it's not high energy, it's not low energy. It's just kind of like everybody's there catching Casual. up or whatever. Yeah, you know. So so you uh, introduce. I mean, Daniel and I've talked about that a bunch of times. But a strolling magician, somebody who like acts as like a wedding guest, and they walk up and they're doing crazy things or uh, or, or or something, right? Like something that just breaks up that moment. You know, mm -hmm. um, I love that. So any, just think about those like little valleys of energy, or think about those those. Uh, peaks of energy and and where you can where you can highlight things or where you can break that script. Feel me? Right, a hundred percent. And you know we this is a concept Dan and I talk about a lot that it's your party for everybody else. So yes, the day is about you, but those little moments you can create for your guests end up coming back to you tenfold in just yep. the experience that they get to have because of you guys. Right. Yep. All right, moving yep. on on to the list. So, oh Ooh. Dan, this is a good one. <laughs> So here's what I want you to do, guys. Um, 
Next little thing I want you to think about is packing a small bag of your go-to items. So for the ladies, for the gents, you know, it's it's different for everybody. But um, yep. I ca- I put together a quick list just of things to like give you some ideas. Like for for a, for a lady, you might have like your lipstick in there, a powder, you know, powder for your nose. A perfume is a really good idea. Like your scent that you're going to be wearing that day. Throw a little one in your in your bag. Maybe a deodorant if you're smelly like me. You might need that throughout the day. Little things like that. Uh, if your wedding's taking place outside, uh, maybe a little baby bug spray, blotting pads, or Starbucks napkins, as we ladies know, work the same way. Um, here's a personal <laughs> one. Dan, close your sensitive ears. Ladies, tampons or liners. Uh, so many women get their period unexpectedly on their wedding day. I cannot tell you. I carry them in my emergency bag, and we use them frequently because your nerves are a little mm. goofed up, and for some reason, Mother Nature decides, boom, today's the day this is going to happen, and you're wearing white. <laughs> so um, whatever you normally carry, maybe contact solution, a little travel toothbrush, a change of undergarments, like whatever you think you might need, um, you can have a little bag together ready to go. And this is not something you make that morning. This is something you have together well, excuse me, well in advance to be ready to go. It's like if you're having a baby, that like go bag, right? What do they call it? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bug out bag. Sure. A bob. Dan, what would you think for the guys? What are some things that they can put in their bag? Like, Besides their tampons and panty liners and things. <laughs> I think the guys are maybe a little bit, you know, simpler. Um, always. Uh, no. Why is that always the case? <laughs> so, so as doesn't matter what time of the year your wedding is, you're going to be sweating. I don't care yes. if it's outside, inside, uh, January or July. Um, so deodorant is number one. Uh, maybe cologne if you're a cologne guy, if you wear that. Mouthwash is number two. Um, but the two things that I think are super important – Spare undershirt and an extra pair of underwear. 100%. Like if you're, I'll tell you what, if you're outside and in the summer or whatever and you're taking pictures and you're running around or whatever, um, even even if you don't change those things during the wedding day but you've got an after party, you are definitely going to want a new pair of drawers and and <laughs> uh, a, an undershirt. It's going to make you feel so much better. Um and, you know, uh, maybe you want to bring things like a comb um, or or hair gel, you know, if you, you know, really want to keep yourself uh, looking super sharp. Um, and just, uh, you know yourself, right? Like, right. if there's anything that's going to make your life a little bit more comfortable, maybe it's a flask. Bring a flask with, like, your favorite whatever. Hey, give it to somebody for after the ceremony, for later in the evening. So you can, like, if you're going to a bar or something later or you're doing an after party at your hotel, you can just have something for yourself good to go. Not if you're going to a bar. You can't bring uh, you can't bring a flask into a bar. But I'm just saying, like, you know, if you're hanging out with your buddies at the reception, um, you know, having a flask for yourself might be a nice little touch. Cool. Just saying. Uh, and some of those things, too, and some of the things I mentioned are things um, – there are these – baskets called restroom hospitality baskets or bathroom baskets or whatever they you know whatever you want to call it that you can put in the bathrooms at your venues for you and for all of your guests use and again this is one of those things where if it's not there people don't (gasps) guffaw at the fact that they're not there but it's just a little thing right and that can have like tissues and mints and safety pins and a lot of the other stuff we mentioned bobby pins hairspray bug spray blotting pants the tampons and light what all of these things that then you're not Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're not then responsible for having it on your person, but you know if you run into the bathroom quick, that'll be in there, and everybody gets to benefit from them. I actually have um, an article that I wrote on my blog. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Um, But actually, if you Google wedding bathroom baskets, my little link is probably on the first page there for them on my DPNAC site. But it lists everything that I recommend having in there, things that you can have if you want extra bonus points, and things I don't recommend having in there. And they all link to a really easy, shoppable thing on Amazon so you can just like click 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 bye 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 done so cool yeah all right cool um uh, this next one kind of goes in line Dan with what you were just talking about um do you want to talk about this next one a bit yeah um so if if, uh, you're gonna need clothes besides your your official wedding attire right I'll let you take the ladies um 
But got if, if you're thinking, guys, like after the wedding is done, you're gonna want to get out of your suit. I know that for a fact. Um, it doesn't matter if you're going back to a hotel or back to home or whatever. Have a bag packed so you're not like rifling through stuff or or whatever. Pack this a couple days in advance. Um, you know, don't forget the silly, the simple things like I said before. Extra underwear, another undershirt. Um, maybe you just want to bring your own washcloth. Uh, I, I don't. It depends on where you're at. Like sometimes just like rubbing yourself down or like yeah. rubbing some of the sweat off just with a wet washcloth makes you feel you know a hundred times better i had an aunt that would call that a horse bath not like a horse the other word um yeah. because like that yeah. was how she got cleaned up i think i always think that's so cute and funny anyway <laughs> that's how my family is um yeah and like ladies honestly same thing trust me you when that night is over you want to get that dress off but also think about what you're wearing before you put the dress on right if you're getting hair and makeup done you're not in that dress right away guys you are in who knows what, right? And we have to think about if you're getting hair and makeup done, whatever you're wearing can't come off really over your head, or at least you don't want it to, because now you're going to run the risk of messing that all up. So think of like button down shirts, yep. robes, anything that you can easily take off without going over your head and nothing that's really tight fitting. So you don't have those like lines, right? We all know yep. those lines, like when we take off the bra and the, the straps are there or hair tie on the wrist. Those are all things that as you're getting dressed and now you're in your dress, now you don't want to see those lines. So the sooner you get them off, the better. Yep, so yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Hmm. All right. Uh, oh, also change of shoes. That's another thing. Um, a lot of people will end up changing their shoes uh, at some point during the reception. Maybe not necessarily our guys, but our ladies most certainly. Because um, yeah. they're that, pretty, but they hurt. <laughs> they do hurt. I know. It's crazy. And I think the prettier they are, the more they hurt. It's like someone's out to get Although, us. Although I've heard some some of the the fancier shoes like Badgley Mishka and Jimmy Choo's and stuff that they they're they're better. Um, well, they're certainly better than like a Payless or a you know a, a you get what you pay for. But I'm sorry, even the gorgeous ones, my brides are like, look at how pretty my shoes are. When can we take them off? <laughs> so, <laughs> gotcha. For um, sure. I, I mean, if you're thinking about from the guest experience, definitely that basket of old navy one dollar flip-flops uh are like that basket is always empty at the end that's of the night 100 percent. that's a, a lovely little thing i wish there was something similar for the guys guys you could just take off your shoes well be careful taking off their shoes there's always broken glass or something that i get so worried about but i definitely I had know. a heel go right on top of my shoe before being in, in the zone yeah i mean if you're at you know 20 weddings a year something's bound to happen <laughs> Especially when happen. you're as good of a dancer and in the thick of it as I am. That's true. You are very much out there. Um, yep. All right. Last but not least, one last yep. little thing. And this really isn't an exciting one. We should have ended on one that's way more exciting than this, but it's important. Mm. So we're going to talk about it. I want okay. you to make a plan for gifts and for cleanup at the end of the night. Like we talked about earlier, receiving actual physical gifts at your wedding is definitely becoming more rare, but you'll at least have a bunch of cards that, let's face it, probably have money and checks and very valuable things in it. So I want you guys to make a plan for who is going to take those things at the end of the night that is not you, because it's just going to be one of those things that you don't want to have to figure out and deal with at that yeah, moment. Sucks. We as as planners and your vendor team, we can only do so much. And at a certain point, we have to pass those things on to you because they're your they're your items. So um I think it's it's one of those things that it's it's so important and it's easy to just focus on like the setting up and bringing it all together and how are we going to get this stuff to the venue and uh, you know all these things but you go wait how are we getting all this stuff back? Yep. Some venues you have to have everything out of there that night. Others let you come back the next day. Either way, pass off that responsibility to anybody other than yourselves. It might just be like your small things like, okay, your table numbers and your cake cutting set or like a huge cleanup where you're breaking down tables and chairs, packing up leftover alcohol. Like it's it's all a part of it, you guys. Yeah. 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 Can you guys can you guys write to us? I would love somebody to write to us and just let us know what they're doing on their wedding day that they're really excited about. Just like how, how they're how they're flipping that script. I'd love to hear about yeah. that. And for our Patreon supporters, we are definitely going to be talking about this more. That's what I'm loving about Patreon is um, just the ability to extend this conversation further and like dive into stuff, figure out what works best for who. And just it's a party. It's a party in there. <laughs> for everybody else. Yeah. Oh, what, no, it's a party for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a party for us. <laughs> awesome. Awesome.
Nailed it.